care whiskey. And then he yeah. gets killed. I'm sorry. And I forgot that death, but that was one of the deaths earlier on that had me worried about this movie too. Cause you don't see him. You don't see anything really happen with him. You just see the head hover above him. Yeah, and then you just keep hearing about whiskey and you're like, is whiskey okay? No, yeah, no, we heard a rah, 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 rah. like we, that dog's dad. How did the boar catch whiskey? Because, because if whiskey didn't see the boar, the boar is super fast and sneaky. <laughs> That's a oh, rule. Yep, this yep, this yep. pig is inversely as fast as you are aware of the pig. So if you see it, it's just like a big, clunky, runny pig. If it's right next to you and you see it, it's super clumsy and it has no dexterity whatsoever. If it is not near you and you don't see it, that thing is lightning fast. It is like quicksilver. You need to. It's like a weeping angel uh, from Doctor Who. Do, do you ever watch yes. that show? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I know. Yes, it it is. It is Jason Voorhees and Jason Takes Manhattan. And I, I, all right, I'm skipping ahead, man. But I got to tell you, my favorite kill in this mo movie is what happens to to Mosley when his stepdaughter's boyfriend just pushes him down. Dude, that kid was so disrespectful. Well, I'm calling him a kid. I guess he's like 20, that was 22. That weird, the conversations they were having in the house and stuff. He was being very well, aggressive on that daughter. Even in the car. Even in the car, he was rude. Right. And in the openings, when we first meet them all in the car and then he's always a little rude in general. No one's calling anything out on this. But Bill Mosley, dad, is a bit, you know, passive. He, Bill Mosley has the, this really odd talk with him about taking care of his stepdaughter. And then when they see this boar, <laughs> the kid goes full on purge. He pulls a purge. Yep. And he just pushes him. Mosley gets pushed. They see, they, they, they see. What's funny, too, is that they see a huge boar monster, right? And it is monstrous. It's not just big. It's not like when you're, you see like a bison or something. No, this thing looks like it came out of Hellfire. A rhino. And they're looking at, and Bill Mosley is just like, would you look at that? He almost has a smile. It reminded me of when Sam Neill first saw dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. Yeah, the brontosaurus is. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's like this dumbfounded, kind of stunned, kind of smiling look. He's like, "Would you, God? Do you see that thing?" Look, he even slowly steps towards it, like, <laughs> like, like really, like there's no sense that this is dangerous. The kid looks nervous as hell. He even like starts to step towards Bill Mosley and then steps back again while he's behind him and then steps forward again and then eventually, yeah, he pushes him, purge style, and runs. And I was like, "You son of a bitch!" Yeah. I was so <laughs> upset. And then. You would assume when this happens by the rules of common decency in horror films, you would assume that the pig is actually going to run past Bill Mosley, knock him, hurt him badly, or you think he gets trampled to death, but he's really okay. And then it goes and gets the asshole. But that's not what happens. He gets decapitated. Dude, that thing is shit. This is one of the CGI things. That thing grabs Bill Mosley. And remember when Thor was slamming Loki back and forth? Yeah. It made me think of that, just yep. slamming him back in it. And the CGI for this, if you really pay attention, is is really bad, especially yeah. the the Bill Mosley body. But I don't, I still love the scene anyway because it's just so <laughs> unexpected. And then later on, I love the movie rule of the guy. So the, the 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 boyfriend, his name is Robert. He's standing in like an open field, and everyone's looking at him, but no one mentions the boar that's sprinting at him. Uh, so, and, and then they as soon like does that like so the boar must have been running at him for a while because it came at there him. There must have been a thousand foot radius of not even a tree around him. Yep. And the, the <laughs> women, the people didn't see the boar right up until it hit him. They were just this sort of, thing. It's the size <laughs> of a van. <laughs> <laughs> and he and got truck. So big. If that thing was running, I swear they would feel the ground shaking, even if they were blind and deaf. They would have. Felt the ground shaking and known something was wrong. Yep. They, they uh, and then it just trucks him. So bye Dude, bye, it's, Robert. It's almost like the kid didn't see him because it wasn't in the camera frame. Yeah. <laughs> well, like you like said, just, he wasn't looking at it, right? So that's how fast right. he is. So maybe that's he flew how, that distance in one second and no one could respond. Dude, that thing was going 160 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. And then he stopped like, on I mean, a dime. It, I mean, it, it almost makes me think of, like, when someone's falling from a building and, like, when they're 10 feet from the ground, all of a sudden, whoosh, Superman just whips by and grabs him out of nowhere. Like, yep. it was just like that, but with death. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, I have another question for you. How fun would it be to hang out in that pub? It's well stocked. Oh. It's well stocked, isn't it? It's well stocked. It's uh, It's got a congenial – well, you know, I mean, they're they're out in some little outback town. I mean, I'll bet those people that we see there are eighty percent of the patronage. Yep. And but do you see how much beer exactly. was in the fridge? Yeah, no, it had loads of. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know how to explain that when I really start thinking about the economics of it. And then I love <laughs> the part where he's like, "I need some beer," and she gives him a case of bitter, uh, you know, like what, you know, some beer, and then she just drops two sandwiches and some chocolate. I'm like, I want to go hang out in the, the outback and drink beer and eat chocolate and sandwiches with those guys. Well, and she was being extra nice, though, right? Because yeah. her dad was John Jarrett. Yeah, and then that one lady was like, I'm going to go get me some of that. <laughs> yeah. No, there was a lot. You know what? It wasn't to the same writing or performance level, but it reminded me of how um, familiar – and 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 lived in all the characters felt like in the pub and grabbers when you first meet him. Oh no, he ca- he does a good job capturing that. It doesn't feel fake. Yeah. It feels lived in. I really and I so for me, I kind of enjoyed the hanging out moments a lot. <laughs> just not with the mm-hmm. core family. I, I'd rather just and then that, the guy from uh, Razorback is telling stories about boars, and they're all listening right. to it. And John Jarrett and his buddy, uh, I can't think of the guy's name, but yeah, so so when they were out camping and everything before they investigated the the, the campsite and saw those flesh stripped bodies, yep. but they were they were chatting along like I I could just watch these guys be an R rated like country Aussie odd couple. I feel like they they had just, to have improved a lot of that, right? I, yeah, I, part of me wonders like. If those two guys, I mean, they're both Australian actors who've been around a long time. Like, are they just buddies? Did they just actually get buzzed and come on the set and just and just c- c- you know, like think about it. it's almost like if we were if if I was being cranky and you're like, come on, John, let's just go for it. No, I'm like, let's just take let's take take the car. It's like get off your bloody ass and let's you know. It's like it's it was just so it felt so real. <laughs> it's such a stupid. It's so weird to be focusing on that in this movie. But yeah, I agree. The, the character moments wonderful, yeah, and they're yelling at each other. They're saying mean stuff, but they, you know, they're, they're just going to go hang out tomorrow. And I like that John <laughs> Jarrett was getting more work. I guess we could call his character name, but you, I mean, whatever. Ken, Ken's Ken, getting. Yeah. I like that he's getting a lot of work because the boar's destroying all the fences. <laughs> so I mean, the boar helped the local economy, right? I'm sure. Well, I mean, well, I mean, in wartime, you know, the economy it does well. So yeah, this was their little miniature version of that. Like you know, some livestock was dying, some fences are going down. It was the drought too. You know, something that they they, they never really go out of their way to focus on in this, and it makes sense biologically. If there was a some drought, it makes that that's when um you know like a predator or any large foraging animal is going to have to you know widen its foraging radius, if you will, yep. and and find new areas for food, but. I wonder, I'd love to ask the director this, right? Like, was this meant to be a global warming statement or was just just meant to be like, yeah, I mean, you're out in the middle of nowhere and every now and then there's a drought and, you know, times are tough on planet Earth, regardless of global warming. Sometimes this happens. But was this meant to be a little a a very subtle global warming jab that the animals are turning on us? That's interesting. I read a bunch of interviews and I never caught that from him, but. I like, you know, what what did she say? How are you going to find him? You're on like a like a 900 a million acre thing. So maybe was right. was the I guess the boar was at the outskirts. That's a good point. So it just started coming in because of the um it started coming in because of the the drought. Yeah, they, they, the the guy at the bar telling the story about how he had seen the thing and just didn't have a camera to take the phone. Didn't have a cam a, a phone <laughs> or with a, a camera yeah, or a phone. <laughs> <laughs> right, which was a cute little again, like a cute little character aside, where he, you're just learning about his technological uh, mm-hmm. issues. It's like, yeah, you know, if I had a camera, a phone with a camera, I'd, I'd take a picture of it with the camera, but I don't have that kind of phone, <laughs> so I didn't take a picture. It's like, well, <laughs> duh. But but so but yeah, they, he he was even saying, you know, like this has been going on for a month. Da 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 da. da. I saw the thing that's doing it. Um, so this has been going on for a bit. So this thing could have covered some ground. I, I, another interesting thing about this movie. Uh, so we just did a podcast about the Friday the 13th remake, and I'm writing an article about Jason teleporting again. But in that movie, you have a bunch of young campers. and this one, there are some older campers. I'm not used to seeing older campers in movies getting killed. Does that make sense? Well, 
And, and of course, even Ken and Bill were camping. Yeah. This <laughs> just movie. because it would be fun. Yeah. Like, hey, let's just go out and camp. But uh, We're just uh, camping out to get some beer. But I'm not <laughs> used to older campers in, in creature features or older movies. You know what I mean? But yeah, I get, what do you think they were, those two victim couples? Like, w- at least 30. The young, the younger couple in the tent that died, and then the other couple was 30s. That, that dude could have been 40. Yeah, that guy was in his 40s. Maybe he had a younger girl. But they seem to have been together for a long time because they had a pretty interesting. Like he yelled at her, and she's like, "I don't like that." He's like, "Yeah, my bad." So they have a lived-in thing there. Wait, and she, that woman got gore through the head, and then she lived, and she had a jo- dude. Yeah, jo- I, she, she had a Joker we, mouth. We totally forgot that because at first I was thinking like, is that one of those things like in Fight Club where he shoots under the jaw and it comes out? As well? No, that came from behind, and the whole tusk was coming through her mouth. So that went like that would have ruptured vertebrae, like dead, 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 dead. Her spine. But either way, her spine cool. was destroyed. So when it when, when it picked her up and worried her, <laughs> like again. I, I I I loved that. It was a little clunky, but just seeing the limbs flail around and that that big practical monster just shaking her body. Oh, I loved it. So I I, loved that. I made a joke on movie some of the flicks Facebook the other day. I saw I saw this movie for the first time uh, by Bloody Disgusting. I think they put the trailer up. So it was gonna be on Shutter. And I said this movie was designed for John Levengood. Is that is that true? I, well, I mean, you know how excited I got when I saw the trailer. So here, here's how you know this was made for me. One, <laughs> Nathan Jones. Okay, I love Nathan Jones. I loved him as a bad guy briefly in The Protector. I love, love, love. I was so – not that I wasn't going to see Fury Road anyway, but seeing – I would have saw it just for him if I hated Mad Max. Like I, I love him and everything he does. I saw Charlie – I bought Charlie's Farm just because he's in it. So there's that factor, right? And then this is just a big, cool monster movie, and the trailer – was suggestive of uh, practical effects because you see like it's drippy, just just blood and slobber soaked lower jaw in the tr- in the original teaser trailer, and I'm like, oh god, is this not CGI? I'm all over that. And then since 2017, when I first saw the trailer, I watched, I I bought Razorback, I bought Shaw, which is a Korean Razorback basically, and I bought. Pig Hunt. I bought every killer giant boar movie I could find. What, what's the in best of, all, of this? What's the best of a lot of those four? Uh, you know, or do they all have their own unique charms? Probably, probably this. But you know, no one is truly copying any other. I thought Pig Hunt was the worst movie, but had, but, but was had some of the best gore with its practical creature effects as well. Um, but it was a one trick pony. It was all the last twenty minutes. So like the first hour, you're just like, why am I even here? I was like, prim- and then it-, it was like primeval that where the- you only see the alligator at the very end. You know what I mean? Right. But on top of that, though, primeval, though, at least had a cast and, comp- you know, competent performances, whereas Pig Hunt absolutely did not. The writing was just like, hey, let's let's just buy this porno script and reappropriate it as a giant killer pig movie. <laughs> Like, the, it was so dry. It was like w- walking people off the street and d- having them be actors in one take. But either way, they were all cool, though. Like, there's a lot of love out there for Chaw because it, it, it's got that very dry Korean dark comedy Oh, I just aspect. saw it. It's streaming right – I'm going to watch it. It's streaming on Tubi right now. So, T-U-B-I-T-V.com. Uh, it's streaming mm-hmm. for free there. So, I'm going to put that on. I love some Korean carnage. It, but, you know, if any – out of boar – Shaw and Pig Hunt, the only one that really seems to be echoing the plot points of Razor or of, of Razorback is Shaw. Pig Hunt, totally its own movie. This, totally its own movie. Got it. Yeah, I mean, this is this is its own beast as well. And uh, we no before uh, we have something to talk about. But how much research have you done in a Nathan Jones life? He's had a fascinating life. Have you read about him? Other than the fact that he kind of started out as a wrestler, I, I don't know anything about him. So from sixteen to eighteen, he was a bank robber. And he, what? yeah, he was on, um, he was on the most, he was the number one most wanted person in Australia for a while. And then he got arrested and he went to jail for seven years. And during that time, he learned about becoming a strong man. And so he started working out a lot in prison. And then he entered the strong man world and he, in Australia. And so he did a lot of those competitions. And then he, Started with lower wrestling tier wrestling promotions, and he got brought into WWE. He was supposed to make his introduction in a WrestleMania match, but he got pulled, and he ended up going and helping uh, at the end of it. 
So what happened was after that, the WWE sent him to go train more, and then he 